Hello everyone, welcome to another video of our tech reviews. Today we're going to talk about two different methods to create a rate volume. So first of all, what is rate? So according to Wikipedia, rate stands for redundant array of independent disks. And the two of commonly used rate levels are rate 0 and rate 1. So here let's use two 1 terabyte mechanical hard drive as example. So in rate 0, the controller is going to break up the data into two pieces and then write to both drives simultaneously. So um, basically you're getting double the write speed because it's only writing half of the data to each drive and it's happening at the same time. So uh, in rate zero, we're getting two terabyte of storage and theoretically double the speed, although it doesn't scale that way in real life. In rate one, it's called a mirror rate. So basically the controller duplicates the same data and write it to both drives so that you got a copy of every byte of data written to the drive. In this case, even one drive fails, you still have all your data on another drive and then you can recover it by rebuilding the rate later. But since it's writing the same data to both drives, so you're only getting half of the uh, physical capacity, which is one terabyte in this case. Rate zero and rate one are the most commonly used rate levels in consumer market. And for servers, you will more commonly see something like rate five or rate 10, but that's a topic for another day. So uh, today we're gonna talk about two different methods to create a rate volume. The first one is the BIOS method. So first, let's enter the BIOS. Let's go to advanced settings and then PCH storage. Make sure the SATA mode is in RAID instead of AHCI. The terminology might differ by motherboards, but you will see something similar. You can refer to your motherboard menu for this. And after we're done with that, let's hit save and then restart. Then let's get back into BIOS. And then you should see a new option at the very bottom of the advanced menu, Intel Virtual RAID on CPU. So uh, let's go into all Intel VMD controllers and now we can see the two drives we have. So um, what we're gonna do here is to create a new RAID volume. Here, um, let's name it Intel P3608, and then uh, we're doing RAID 0 here. Uh, it's called the strike mode. And here we include both of our drives, and then we're just gonna use the default strip size. After we create the volume, let's hit save and exit. And then we'll reboot it into Windows. And then let's open Intel Virtual RAID on CPU software. Uh, you will need to install the software in order to make it to work because it also contains the driver for the RAID controller. The software already recognized our RAID volume. And let's just double check under uh, disk management. Now we can see our drive. And so we are going to initialize it with GPT. And then we can create a simple volume. Okay, and there we go. So next, let's talk about a second method. If you're not terribly familiar with the auto BIOS settings or your motherboard just do not have the uh, appropriate settings, then you can do it under Windows with the software. So um, mm -hmm. the same as last time, we're gonna go into PCH storage and make sure that we choose RAID for the SATA mode. And then in operating system, let's open the um, virtual RAID on CPU software. And then you can see, although it recognizes our drives, but there's no volumes. So we're gonna create a volume here. And then uh, here we're gonna use rate zero, for example. And then uh, you can name the volume to whatever you like. Here we're also gonna name it P3608. And then we include both of our drives here and just leave the rest as the default. And after hitting create, it says create successfully. And same as last time, let's go into disk management. And again, we initialize the hard drive and we create a new simple volume on it. Okay, let's run some benchmarks to see uh, if our RAID actually works. So here's Crystal Disk Benchmark. And as you can see here, um, of course it's not achieving double the performance because it just does not scale that way but it's much faster than a single drive. Let me talk about a virtual RAID on CPU. So basically, starting from X299, Intel requires a separate hardware key in order to use virtual RAID on CPU. You can use RAID 0 and RAID 1 in pass-through mode for free, but you gotta buy the physical key 
in order to activate rate 5 or rate 10 or other levels of rate. Uh, we'll have a separate video on that. So please subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Okay, that's it for today's video. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.